Let's see, let's just send my dog out. Normally, sending your dog off is, like, kind of important. It's like, oh no, you know, I, I kind of need him for things. You know, hold off a couple of enemies, cast some spells. And Minion Master Alchemist is just like, I'm not even going to miss him. I mean, the doggo is great, and we should probably get him some equipment. Oh. Oh, I see. I apparently sent it off and then didn't work. Okay. This is all poison damage. Not really that helpful. Because what we want to do is build the dog for strength. Strength and defense, honestly. Ooh, unidentified ring. Level to adventurer skill. Uh, let's see, which one of you is strength? You. Might as well do that. Uh, let's see, is that actually better? Strength, strength, defense? Nah. Okay. Get him, doggo. Yeah. So apparently, if you change areas, the dog will, uh, the dog will actually just come back to you. Yeah, it makes sense. Only gone for a short period of time because I've just been investing nothing in. Uh, into nothing but but minion damage here, which is kind of nice. Not gonna lie. Ow. You good? Yeah. I mean, I I truly can just kind of run past unless it's a unless it's an actual like mid boss. That's the kind of thing I should probably care about. Because anything that give give me fame is important. Because I don't want to, I don't want to skimp on those. That is, I I like the fame bar system. You know, it's kind of like a little bit of extra exp here and there. Except for only for skill points, it, and for a game like this, especially where, yeah, unless you like play ridiculously long, you're pretty much never going to be able to like max out any of the skills. And so having that little, like, extra fame bar to give you more or less twice as many skills as you get from, um, as you get from leveling, like, that actually, that's a smart way of doing things. I, it is a bit of a shame for me that a lot of these, like, actually good, interesting indie development teams get kind of shafted over the years. Uh, I don't know, I, I think it would be really cool if, uh... It would have been really cool if these guys had had more success with Hob, because I thought Hob was lovely. Most people didn't. Most people didn't give a damn about Hob. Which makes me sad. It was good. Um, and so, like, yeah, Torchlight. Torchlight was great. Torchlight 2 apparently was, like, amazing, and maybe Torchlight Frontiers will be okay. I don't know. It sounds like it's going to be more of an MMO. Which spooks me. I'm not a big fan of MMOs anymore. You know, games that are kind of designed to keep you playing. Like, I don't mind the uh, the Borderlands kind of style, where it's just like, yeah, okay, you've you've beaten the game. Here's like a bunch of end game content to muck around in. But I guess I guess Borderlands is like, well, you've beaten the game, time to beat it again, and then maybe like one or two more times and charge it up. I uh. Maybe I'll say I, I'm not a big fan of Diablo 3. I had fun playing it on the Switch, and I proceeded to play it on my own, just kind of killing time while rendering videos. And, like, it was fun. I think it's just replaying through uh, Diablo in general was kind of boring. Um, but their approach to handling, like, content and content grinding was really refreshing because it is designed to keep you there and there is like a huge loot grind if you really want to like max yourself out but if you want to like just kind of rush for the end game you can get there and it doesn't take that long and it feels like really streamlined um and so in games like games like this uh, i guess anthem is the is the current thing coming out technically i have anthem i could play it uh, I know it doesn't officially release for like a day or two, and it's been like kind of officially available for, uh, for like that pre-release demo. But my my motivations have been kind of low. I have been kind of busy uh, moving across the country, 
and it doesn't seem like it's getting very good reviews anyway. So, the Anthem might just be something that I load up at some point, or, or not. Um, but, you know, from what I've heard, it's a very repetitive experience, which is interesting, because, you know, it's like, okay, well, what makes Torchlight so fun when Anthem isn't? And I almost want to say it's kind of like uh, power scaling. You know, most ARPGs like this make you feel strong. You know, they give you a, a whole toolbox of interesting things that you can use. Nope, you get out of here. Um, you know, a whole toolbox of, of fun toys as you go through the game. And you get progressively more ridiculous as you go along. And actually really enjoy it. Whereas I feel like in games like Anthem, it's just kind of like, alright, you got the slightly better weapon. Now go get the slightly better weapon. I guess that's kind of how it works in, in this, but I think the point is, Torchlight you're meant to sink like a decent chunk of time into it, and then you're done. Let's see, your minions are enraged, resulting in improved damage and attack speeds. That I'd like to get. What's the cooldown on it? It doesn't say. That might be something to pump a lot of points into. Do you do charm levels? No. I mean, Pet Mastery, absolutely. If I can max that out, my pets are going to be dangerous. I don't actually even know... I don't even know if they're affected by my magic stat or their own internal numbers. These are things I'd probably look at if I was actually going to be, like, min-maxing this. But again, this is kind of a race to the finish series. Uh, reminds me very specifically of... Uh, I don't know how many of you guys saw SteamWorld Dig, but when SteamWorld Dig 2 was more or less coming out, I was just like, oh shit, I should play SteamWorld Dig 1, just to make sure that I've got it. Because I I played through the entirety of SteamWorld Dig, uh, more or less back at the beginning of my channel, as kind of a no commentary series that I was going to go back uh, through and add commentary to later as kind of like a fun thing. Uh, and then I just never did, because laziness and time and post-commentary is a giant pain in the ass. And, uh... And, like, I could do it, but, like, why why waste all of that extra time? Uh, it works for certain people like Chip and Ironicus that are really trying to do a specific thing, which is, like, obscene, like, expert 110% clears of every game they seem to ever play, which is like, it's really cool, and there's a huge appeal to that sort of thing, uh, but not for me. And so yeah, post-commentary, I'm not even, I'm not even interested enough in actually uh, playing through games on hard, let alone like finding all the content, so yeah, that, that sort of content style is right out. Let's see. Hey, Mysterious Gloves. I like finding set items in these games. Unfortunately, they're usually just like slightly better. But that's that's better, slightly better. Anything else immediately useful? Doesn't look like it. Let's just dump it. I want to clear out most of those gems, but we'll do that at a later date. Get them my minions so I can just stand here. It works. Let's see. Big health potion, mana potion. I'm gonna load up on things. Uh oh, that's just heavy. Heavy leather boots. I don't care about heavy leather boots, and I got them anyway. Oh, dang it. But yeah, what else is it? I guess maybe there's just a certain zen to these games too. You know, when fighting an enemy, you just clonk them down. A couple of them provide like some level of resistance. Oh! My dog is summoning skeletons and, and archers. Because those are his archers that he's got. I wonder... I'll have to double check that. I, I wonder if he doesn't summon anything. Or if his, if his summons are affected by my abilities. Because if that's the case, that's amazing. And if it's not, oh, oh well. Not the end of the world. 
But you know, I guess kind of the appeal in these games is to just like churn through large, large mobs of enemies and just kind of have fun with it. And I can't really put my finger on why, you know, a game like Destiny, for example, you need a little bit more than that to keep you going. Unidentified shield. It's okay. Nothing I care too hard about. Ring, the ring though might be useful. Health and increased magic finds. Sure. Get out of here. Okay. But maybe it's kind of one of those where, like, with an action RPG like this, you're kind of more expen expected to just like turn through groups of enemies, and the gameplay is is fairly limited to begin with. So, there's no feeling of, like, this needs to be deeper. Though, maybe games like Path of Exile actually do set that expectation of, like, this game would and should should be deeper. And there's... yeah. Maybe? I don't know. It might also be one of those that, like, if a really big design studio ever decided to make... Uh, Ooh, Spell Summon Skeleton 2. Now, I've got Summon Skeleton 1. It doesn't seem like there's any major difference there. Visually, they're no different, so I'm not actually sure what the... I'm assuming they're just raw stats are better. It looks like they do more damage. Yeah, things are dying a little bit faster. We might also be able to summon more. Grab a gold standard. I can't imagine the gold standard actually uh, sells for any more, but I'm going to grab it just in case it does sell for a lot. But no, Blizzard, Blizzard makes, well, used to make really high-end action RPGs. So I'll have to think about this. Because it's weird, uh, compared to Torchlight, uh, Anthem, I guess, has deeper gameplay. And yet, at the same time, like, Torchlight will be forever beloved as one of the better Diablo-likes to ever be made. And Anthem will probably be panned as, like, well, it, it could have been good. Even though, by all rights, Anthem is... The more interesting game, you know, it has a story, it actually has characters that talk to you. Uh, though, admittedly, I think the delivery is just about as wooden. Maybe? You know, you can actually fly around and explore whole areas, and there's, there's like a bunch of different guns, and the gameplay kind of changes based on what your abilities are, and co-op, and a billion other things. It, I guess price and expectation and some other things really do make a, a, a massive difference, along with, like, perceived value. You know, Runic Game made or Runic Games made a pretty damn good Diablo like all things considered, especially for the times. I mean, obviously at this point it's been heavily overshadowed by Path of Exile and uh, by Path of Exile by Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn is real good and like a whole bunch of other ones over the years. And so, you know, it holds up. It Actually, it really does hold up quite well, all things considered. Ultimately, yeah, it is very, very just basic, you know, action RPG grind, go into an area, here's like an objective or two to kind of give you a, a sense of like, yeah, you're doing something important here as opposed to just killing hordes of enemies. I would actually like to play one of these games that straight up doesn't even bother telling you a story. It's just like, nope, go. Here's your dungeon. That'd be kind of hard to pull off, though. Uh, all right, Shell. And there she goes. Okay. She just, like, prances into view, and then prances out of view. It's like, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> um. I wonder if you could have some kind of, like, ridiculous sliding sliding scale thing. Like, just a score 
system with no cap. No, you couldn't you couldn't judge things like like that. Because like if I were to give a score to say like well, I mean a bunch of different different games. My pack is full. You know, obviously there's that question of uh, would I give this game a 10 out of 10? No, I'd probably give this probably a solid 8. Um, but why would you give an Anthem an uh, less than that? Even though ostensibly it might actually be more fun? Hmm. I think this is part of the reason why uh, IGN's review scores are always just kind of random. No, no, it's not. I mean, obviously they do take kick kickbacks, which is not great. And they don't want to piss off developers too much by, like, saying, like, this game is terrible. It's the worst game since Fallout 76. Which, like, man, the media really ripped into them for that game. I actually enjoyed it, but obviously not that much. Or else I'd still be playing it. I'm, honestly, I probably would have gotten banned for something. You banned a guy for just having too much ammo. Like, <laughs> I, man, man, what were they thinking? What is Bethesda's, like, game plan here? Just piss everybody off and just hope, just hope that Elder Scrolls 6 is enough? That might actually be the case. Just be like, well, nobody liked uh, this one. Then again, I mean, like nobody really liked Elder Scrolls Online when it first came out. At this point, it's actually one of the better MMOs out there. Not that there's much competition anymore. Uh, from what I've heard, it sounds like Guild Wars 2 might actually be in trouble, which is kind of spooky. Because, like, uh, NCSoft is is uh, planning mass layoffs and stuff, which is is spooky for any developer. I mean, that's what happened to Runic Games. Effectively, they made Hob and nothing else over the course of a couple of years, and then it's just like, well, we're pulling the plug on your studio. We're kind of doing okay. We're pulling the plug on your studio. I, oh, God. The idea of being owned by another company is terrifying. I think I was kind of saying it, but, like, I would do it if I was, like, older and I got a really good deal out of it. Like, if some, if, uh, what's a good example? I mean, honestly, if Rooster Teeth came along and was like, Wander, we will hire you, but it'll be the end of, like, you know, the Wanderbot in brand is an independent thing and you'd be a subsidiary of, of Rooster Teeth. You know, that sort of thing, I could actually see having a, having an appeal. You might hear train noises. There's a train going by. You might not. I don't know. I. My new place is also kind of near the train, but I don't think it's going to be that near to the train. It's also not that loud. All things considered. And it's gone, actually. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be a big deal. And I truly don't think that's going to ever be picked up in, in any of my uh, recordings in the future. Once I have like a new office set up and a bunch of noise-canceling foam and stuff, oh, it's going to be so nice. A couch. I'm looking forward to that couch. It's going to be a nice couch. Uh, oh, right. i got to resummon some more of my, my gooners. I think my, my imps get killed. I don't think they have as much HP as my... Uh, I don't think they have as much HP as my skeletons. Or... Uh, man, I have no idea. But no, like, if if I had somebody approach me like that, I might actually go with it. But it would have to be one hell of a sweet deal. And I don't think I'm going to get that sweet deal. I'm just kind of a dude. You recover the glyphs so quickly. Your power is growing, my friend. I will open the last rune gate, but please be cautious. The blighted ember creates abominations. There's no telling what monstrosities lay on the other side. To stay in these corrupted tunnels much longer. Find me in torchlight when you've finished. Hi. I will go kill the thing, and you will just stand there talking at me. I remember right. All of the characters in this game, to some degree, are actually in Torchlight 2. In some capacity. I want to say spoilers, they kind of did the interesting thing, instead of having the Destroyer be the bad guy, I'm pretty sure I'm actually playing as the bad guy for Torchlight 2. Like, I'm pretty sure our character loses it, and uh, our character, the character I'm currently playing as, loses it, and more or less decides, I'm going to be the bad bad guy for once. Uh, I mean, 
probably got hella corrupted by by the ember oh, man I don't even know but like I think that's I think that's how it goes down it's actually kind of cool it's part of the reason why I wanted to play uh, alchemist instead of anybody else because I figured it'd be kind of fun to uh I if I ever played Diablo 1 I'm definitely playing as the warrior because I think that sort of thing would be kind of cool as a like <laughs> you know play Diablo 1 as the warrior then play Diablo 2 as uh play Diablo or Di Diablo 1 is the warrior uh because he's the one that gets turned into uh you know Diablo's next vessel and then probably play uh, Diablo 2 as the Barbarian, because the um, the Barbarian in Diablo 2 is the same Barbarian as in Diablo 3. He just obviously gets older. And, like, I think that's kind of a neat nod. Obviously, I have already played Diablo 3, so it's kind of a little late for that one. Like, I don't know, it would be kind of a neat little, like, aha, continuity thing, as opposed to just, like, who are these people? Why am I this guy? I don't know. I don't know. I like it when games do that, though. As, like, a... Here is the protagonist from the previous game. He's actually in this one. In this one in some way. But he might not be a good guy. It's not always that case, though. They, they kind of did that in... A, in um, oh, what was it? Tales of Symphonia did that. But kind of poorly. Because, like, t Tales of Symphonia 1 was real good. And Tales of Symphonia 2 was, like, not... Not great. Oh, wow. That was immediate... That was fast. Damn. I should probably identify some of these things. Okay. Uh, all poison damage, all electric damage, mana health. Eh, it's okay. The extra health's kind of nice. The extra magic find, extra defense. Yeah, sure. We don't need the sword. A mysterious axe. Let's hold on to that. Oh, assassin chest. Missile range by a meter. Actually, I haven't seen that before. Uh, and that is... That's better than what I've got. I haven't exactly been re replacing any of my equipment. I <laughs> It straight up doesn't matter. <laughs> so I don't bother. I probably should. It's very clear, clearly like... Uh, scaling harder than I've... Uh, I've been giving it credit for. No, that's that's not really the term. It scales pretty freaking well, and I've just been really lazy. Hello, that's a cool thing. I love the creature design in this game. It's they have undead and stuff, but there's a lot of like interesting pseudo demon stuff. But. Well, they have some interesting pseudo-demon stuff, but they have a lot of, like, just, like, legit monsters. And just... Diablo's got some really neat demons and some really neat undead. But let's be honest here. It's kind of all they've got. They don't really break the mold or, or push any major boundaries. Is that it? If this shaking continues, it will destroy the town and collapse the tunnels. Something massive must be stirring below. I can't imagine what could do this. Go, find the source of these quakes and put an end to them. Something is trying to slow us down. It fears us. I take heart in that. We exit portal. I assume this dumps us out so we can fight the, the horror monster. I hope... I hope that way gate is just automatically unlocked. Water pours from the ruins above and falls down into oblivion. These caverns are lost to time, primal. The ember veins change as I descend, shifting colors, first hidden, then gleaming and glittering. It fascinates me now as it did when I was young. Even the blight seems more pure here. My experiment may have succeeded if I had used ember from deeper in the mountain, closer to the source. 
There is still the corruption, of course, but with endless life, that becomes a small matter. Perhaps I will gain more here than I ever imagined. Whee! Okay, so how much money do I have? I got some stuff. My inventory is getting kind of full. I should have probably just used the way portal, but, like, who cares? I've got 40 town portal uh, scrolls sitting around in my inventory. And I should probably get rid of some of these things. Let's start with the gems. I know I can combine my gems down, so I should probably do that and actually bother socketing things and actually bother doing a lot of... Uh, sounds like effort. Oh. Yeah, let's just move it all over. Oh. I could have just... Okay, there we go. Let's see, we don't want to get rid of Ward's Cleaver. The mysterious helmet. Hello. Uh, let's see. Armor, health stolen on hit, pet, and minion speed. Oh, that's amazing. That's really good for me. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to equip it. Same thing with the ward's cleaver. Oh, let's get rid of the rest. The assassin chest I should be able to grab. But that has the abilities I want. Eh, whatever. That is impossible. My inventory is full. Oh. Okay, you know what? Uh, wait. Did I just dump a bunch of things in here? Have I? Oh. Uh, I was wondering about this. Wait, okay, so some of these are blue, yeah? No. Grab the Gorgon Glove. I don't think the Gorgon Glove's actually gonna do me any good. Same thing with, um... Falcon's Dust Guard. It's not actually good. It kind of is. I think I was trying to sell stuff to my stash. Did I just I get rid of... Ward's Cleaver. I just got rid of Ward's Cleaver like an idiot. Well, whatever. It wasn't actually that good. It's okay. If I ever play this again, and I'm probably not going to, I'm probably just going to move on to uh, Torchlight, Torchlight 2 and never look back. Because that got way more support. And then, uh, obviously, like a couple other games. Um, hmm. Okay, you. Skill respec. Well, that's... It's not costly in the slightest. Okay, so we want to do... Max that out. Put one into him. Okay, max that out. Now, I could put some more into... Minion Mastery, but I don't think that's really that necessary. I have two more points remaining. Ah, uh, let's see. Range Weapon Expertise? No. Honestly, let's put him into Armor Expertise. That's the other way to do things. Okay, cool. So, how many of these little guys can I have? Five. And I think we're at five, yeah? No, I'm at three. Unfortunately, I think we need corpses to actually get them back. Well, that's that's obnoxious. You. You have a spell. There's a specific spell I'm looking for. Apparently, there... Oh. Summon Skeleton 4. Er, this is what I got. Three right now? Let's summon archers three. Let's summon zombies two. Well, I should have archers three. Um, let's not get rid of bee swarm yet. Pack of five, nice. And yeah, we'll just hold on to that until we can actually use it. Frost. Eh. Let's just sell it for now. He doesn't sell any other spells, right? Nah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, supposedly there's like a blood skeleton that I can get, but uh I guess not. Not right now. Okay, so Yeah, that's gonna get, get kind of tremendous. I'll wanna level those up as I go along as well. But later. Let's see, anything else I immediately want to do? Oh right. Turn in a quest. What can I do for you? You have the real knack for 
a real knack for this, don't you? Thank you for finding this shimmering ember. It's beautiful, but marred by the same blight that affects the other pieces. The results of my research are so, so far, so far are troubling. The impurities I noticed in the death lace ember are also present in the ember from the mine. They're easier to see now that I've seen a more striking example. What can I do for you? There are places in this world undisturbed by the passage of time. It's said that the elements exist there in the most primal form. Logically, the ember there would be imbued with the same energy. You find a cavern lost to time. Search for a shard of primal ember. I'll gladly pay you for retrieving such a rare specimen. Okay, anything else I want to do? What does she sell? Oh, she just sells gems. Now, we could actually start mushing a bunch of things together to get some, like, hella gems. Let's do that. Because if I remember right, they can all be combined down. My pack is full. Okay, so let's put these away. Because if I can Hiya. buy, we're looking for one of these, pure ember. I think, I think we can do it here. Uh, you. Unless we need a fourth. Let's see if I need a fourth. Okay, so that gets me a dull life ember. Or, no. A discolored. Oh. Oh. So you only need two. Oh, and I have a crack, cracked and a dull. Cracked, dull, cracked. Okay, so now we have two dulls. Which gets me discolored. Okay. I should pay more attention to these. Let's see, so we've already got a dull. I wish these were a little bit more obvious. Oh, we also got another map. Okay, so dull, cracked, cold embers. Okay, so this is this is important to pay attention to and understand and use because I've got some I've got some slots. Uh, very he healthy chaos gem. I don't know if those can be comboed down. Dull, cracked. Okay, so we have two cracked and a dull. Discolored, dull. Discolored, dull. Can't do too much with that. Cracked and cracked. Okay, cracked, cracked. And then two dulls. Okay, so the very healthy chaos gems do not. They probably are like jewels. So, what does this do? Electrical resistance, health. I'll just put it in there. I'm probably going to forget but that's fine. So ice resistance, electrical resistance. It doesn't seem like most of these are really that amazing right now. I'm just gonna probably toss them away for the time being. Yeah, just a little bit of poison damage, a little bit of mana stolen on hit. And honestly, considering I barely do anything to begin with, I'm probably just going to dump these things in equipment that I'm just gonna be holding onto for a while. I guess that's our answer. All right, well, that's fine.